Hello and welcome to this short little demonstration on using the chi-squared independence test or the chi-squared test of independence. Now do keep in mind that there's a difference between the chi-squared goodness of fit test and the chi-squared independence test. The chi-squared independence test is used to determine if there's a relationship between two categorical variables. Those that indicates or suggests that you're dealing with two independent populations at least, maybe three or four or five independent populations. Whereas the goodness of fit test, it's one population, period. There's the steps as usual. The parametric test is a chi-squared test of independence. It makes the usual assumption that n times pi and n times 1 minus pi is at least 5 in each of the cells. Uh, if the data violates it, you're, you're stuck. You, there's not much you can do. You can combine some levels in some of the variables, but you can't do anything other than that. So here's the situation. Same situation as always. Here's the new question. Does the proportion of cars breaking the law differ across the four school zones? So this is actually two variables, two categorical variables that we're measuring, uh, that we're trying to determine if they're independent. One categorical variable is the school zone. It has four levels. The second categorical variable is whether or not they violated the law. Two levels. So it's a four level versus a two level uh, problem. Here's the hypothesis written out. It looks very similar to the analysis of variance hypothesis. The, the difference is analysis of variance used mu's because they were looking for equality of population means. Here we're using pi's because it's for, uh, 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 we're looking at comparing population proportions. And there's the test. And let's go ahead and look at the data. So we can automatically see four school zones. So we can we can easily see what the one of the variable levels is going to be. The other variable levels is going to require us to go through and determine how many successes, how many failures in each of those four school zones. And here's what the 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 uh, table looks like. And how did we get this? Well, we just counted. In school zone A, we had 31 successes, 9 failures. In school zone B, we had 38 and 2, 33 and 7, 40 and 0. Um, now remember, pi uh, times n and pi, uh, 1 minus pi times n has to be at least 5 in each cell. Um, this one's going to be kind of questionable, but we'll figure this out later if, if the test is even allowable. Um, so. Now we've got the data summarized right there. We need, we, it's very obvious that we need to test school zone versus speeding. But the question is, how do we get that matrix into R? So here we go. We're going to open up R. And the first thing we do is we've got to create that matrix. We've got to somehow get the data in there. So the matrix is going to be a variable. Since it's a variable, we need to give it some sort of name. Um, Let's call it dt. And the function is going to matrix. Now, if you think about it, how are we going, how is it possible that we can put a matrix into a computer? Well, the first thing is we have to give it the numbers. And then we've got to tell it the dimension of the matrix. And sometimes we have to tell it in which, which order we're putting those numbers in. Because we could put the numbers in 31, 38, 33, 40, 9, 2, 7, 0. Or we could put the numbers in 31, 9, 38, 2, 33, 7, 40, 0. And for the chi-squared test of independence, it doesn't matter. But sometimes it does. So the numbers are, and since we're giving it a lot of numbers, eight numbers in this case, we have to wrap it all in a C. 31, and I tend to put them in by rows. OK, we put the data in. Now we need to tell it how many columns. n call is equal, in this case, to 4. And then we need to specify that we put it in by row. If we put it in by column, we'd say by row equals false. 
control r didn't see a error let's go ahead and look at what the data is there's the data and we do need to double check that it is the same as what we have in our uh, slide 31 38 33 40 31 38 33 40 9 2 7 0 yep it's the same so DT is now going to hold our data that was the hard part now we can pretty it up a little bit but that's not for now let's just perform the chi-square test boom and that's it chisq for chi-square dot test and then you give it the matrix in other words you give it the data because the null hypothesis is that the in uh, that the two categorical variables are independent there's no need to specify the alternative. Now, here's the p-value. Degrees of freedom. Again, degrees of freedom is number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. Test statistic is 13.2707. And then we've got the warning message. It's going to tell us that the approximation may be incorrect simply because we have a cell with 0 in it. But we can't check to see if the chi-squared approximation is still good. Remember p times pi, I mean I'm sorry, p times n and 1 minus p times n have to be at least 5. So let's do those calculations, shall we? And by the way, p times n and 1 minus p times n are the expected number of successes and the expected number of failures for each cell. So then really that's the only cell we have to worry about. So let's, let's do those calculations, shall we? Um, what would we expect there um, if the two variables were independent? Now, now think back. Remember that independent variables meant that probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And since we're looking at counts, we have to multiply that by N. So n times the probability of a and b, which is the expected count there, is equal to the probability of a times the probability of b times n. But what is the probability of a in this case? Well, that's, we could either say it's the probability of being in school zone d or the probability of not being a violator. It's one or the other. b takes up the other. So let's say it's school zone d. Well, the probability of being in school zone d is just 40 the total number of cars that I measured in school zone D divided by 160. So 40 divided by 160. That's going to be probability of A. Probability of B is going to be the number of drivers who did not break the law, which is 1118 divided by 160. So probability of A times probability of B times N. And N is 160. If we run that, we see 4.5. So the expected count there is 4.5. Now that's technically less than 5. And so according to Pearson, who gave us this chi-squared test back in 1904, we should not use it. But Subsequent investigation into this test has suggested that we can get by with number with uh, expected counts as low as one, as long as it's not too many of them. Um, so I'm going to say chi-squared test works here. And I'll say we can rely on this p-value. We can also rely on the p-value because it's not close to our alpha. It's a long ways away from our alpha. So we can be secure in our rejection of the null hypothesis that these two variables, these two categorical variables, are independent. Meaning that knowledge of school zone gives us a better estimation of the knowledge of the proportion of people violating the law. That's kind of, or we can say that the proportion of people violating the law differs in at least one of the four school zones. And that's it. Um, hopefully this was helpful. We're at the end again. Uh, take care.